What is venetoclax? Venetoclax is a small molecule inhibitor of protein called BCL2. Uh, the protein is uh, really important for the survival of uh, tumor cells. It's also expressed in normal cells, but the tumor cells depend on that for a number of reasons, and the levels of BCL2 are high in many hematologic malignancies, including acute myeloid leukemia. So what venetoclax does, it specifically binds to uh, BCL2 protein through specific protein-protein uh, interaction, and it prevents essentially collaboration between BCL2 and pro-death proteins. So what happens is that uh, BCL2 is sort of being neutralized, and therefore the pro-death proteins that are naturally occurring in the cell, they're free to go ahead and kill the tumor cells. And because the leukemias are highly dependent on BCL2, uh, this approach is really effective in leukemia and does not kill as much normal cells as some of the other, for example, chemotherapy does, because it's not as specific to the uh, tumor cells as to the normal cells. That's how it works. <clears throat> it's also uh, called universal sensitizer because by lowering the threshold of cell death, it essentially increases the sensitivity or responsiveness to many, many different types of therapy, being a regular chemotherapy, targeted therapy, immune therapies. So right now, venetoclax is used in multiple, multiple combinations. So if you look at the uh, clinicaltrial.gov website, there are probably more than uh, 50 clinical trials that are ongoing with different combinations of venetoclax in different hematological diseases. So I think that's added value. So by itself, it may not be as effective uh, because the tumor cells are very smart and they get around a uh, single agent. Uh, but if you combine it with uh, some other therapies, then it becomes really, uh, a killer and uh, get, gets rid of leukemia. What are the BCL2 proteins and how do they play a role in AML? So venetoclax is inhibitor of BCL2. Uh, BCL2 is a protein, but there's a whole family of BCL2 proteins, and BCL2 is obviously one of the key ones, we think, but there are multiple other cousins of BCL2. For example, uh, they're called the MCL1, BCLXL, BCL2A1, and the BCLW. So there are four other proteins that can take upon the function of BCL2. So the function of BCL2 and some of these other cousin proteins is to protect cells from uh, dying. So it's pro-survival proteins that are usually residing on the mitochondria membrane. So mitochondria is an organelle within the cell. And uh, so these proteins are essentially um, defending this mitochondria from cell death because inside of the mitochondria are some other molecules that can kill the cells if they're being released. So there's a BCO2 family proteins that protect from cell death like BCO2, but then there are other family members that are in fact killing the cells. So there's a very tight equilibrium between the pro-survival and pro-death proteins. And uh, what venetoclax does is impairs this equilibrium so that now BCL2 is being neutralized, but the protest proteins are being freed to go ahead and kill the cell. So that's the idea. And uh, now we have uh, emergence of the some other small molecule inhibitors that inhibit other family members of BCL2. For example, MCL1 inhibitors, they're in clinical trials. BCLX1 inhibitors are in clinical trials. And so some of them have a slightly different function, and of course the expression levels on different types of leukemia could be different. And also within the given leukemia, for example, acute myeloid leukemia, there are probably some cells that depend on BCL2 and some cells that depend on MCL1. So ideally you would like to target all of them, but uh, it comes down to the uh, sort of therapeutic ratio and uh, if uh, a patient or organism can withstand the toxic toxicity of these agents. Who are the most appropriate patients to use venetoclax? So venetoclax was approved in 2019 for acute myeloid leukemia usage. It was approved in combination therapy. So initial trial that we actually have done back in 2016 was a single agent inhibitor venetoclax in the patients who had relapsed refractory disease. And despite the fact that studies in the lab have predicted that as a single agent, it will be highly efficacious, the tumor cells were smart and they got around it. So we saw responses, but they were short-lived and that the response rate was too low for it to move forward as a single agent for the approval. 
So the next uh, clinical trial was in combination with the two different types of uh, agents. One's uh, called uh, low-dose chemotherapy, cytarabine, and the second is uh, what we call hypomethylating agents. So these are the agents that affect uh, epigenetic uh, makeup of the cells. They're approved for therapy of acute myeloid leukemia, such as is a cited in or is a cited in so these uh, clinical trials, they were running in parallel initially as a phase one, two trials, uh, and they have shown unexpectedly very high response rates. For example, if you take a single agent uh, is a cytidin, the response rates are somewhere, I would say, 20% or less in acute myeloid leukemia. Uh, but when you combine with venetoclax, it goes up to nearly 70%. So that was like a more than doubling of response rates. Again, coming back to the idea that uh, inhibition of BCO2 is really kind of sensitizes it to chemotherapy. And that's why that kind of translated into phase three trials for both of these approaches. Eventually, there was a phase three trial called VRLA-A for azacitid in combination. And then there was VRLA-C for cytarabine combinations. And both of them confirmed the data in phase one, two studies. And they also showed that uh, in addition to high response rate, actually patients lived longer. And this was the most important uh, endpoint because sometimes we have drugs that can induce what we call remission response, but then the uh, patient would relapse. And after they relapse, it's really hard to get them back into remission. But these responses were durable, especially in some patients with acute myeloid leukemia. And so they led, as I mentioned, to extended survival compared with the uh, standard of care at that time. So essentially right now, it is approved for use in uh, older patients who are what we call unfit for standard chemotherapy. There's specific criteria for that. So either age above 75 years old or specific comorbidities if they are above 60 years old. And these are approved therapies for this uh, patient population. So they essentially became a standard of care and being used now in US and many other countries uh, as a frontline therapy for all the patients. And you have to remember that AML is for the most part disease of all the patients. So the medium age is 65 years old. And so majority of the patients we treat are in fact above 60 years old. So venetoclax is right now being used for the majority of acute myeloid leukemia patients. With that said, we think that it's gonna be highly effective also in younger patients when added to chemotherapy. And in fact, the clinical trials just published uh, last year from our institution showed that addition to the high dose chemotherapy in younger patients <coughs> leads to the high response rates and the majority of these patients were able to transition towards stem cell transplantation. But these studies are still ongoing and uh, at this point venetoclax is not approved for younger patients but I think uh, it's just a matter of time and it will, will have it available for essentially all AML patients in some sort of combinations. Can venetoclax cure AML? Unfortunately, venetoclax by itself cannot cure AML. We know that. We don't know that 100% because um, the initial clinical trial with venetoclax was in the relapse population, which is always harder to treat. So we don't have uh, venetoclax single agent data in newly diagnosed AML. But venetoclax in combination can cure AML, uh, but not all. So it's highly dependent on the subset of acute myeloid leukemia. It's very heterogeneous disease, so it has multiple different genetic subsets. So what we know now is that patients who have two particular types of mutation, one is called MP1, the other one is called IDH1-2. Again, MP1 is very common, it's about 25%. IDH1-2 is about 10%, so you can take it, you know, about 35% of total patients if you treat them in combination uh, of uh, hypomethylating agents and venetoclax, the cure rate I would estimate is about uh, 60%. So these are the subsets that are particularly sensitive to venetoclax therapy.